Mike Moore Media, the first place to hear Rockingham County news and information. This program is sponsored by That Little Pork Shop in Uptown Eden. On our media line, Reedsville Police Chief Robert Hassel. Chief, always good to have you on the program. How are you, sir? I'm doing doing well. Hope you are. Yes, indeed. Well, we have a very uh, timely program today. We're looking at social media and uh, teenagers and, and even younger, what they're exposed to on social media. Uh, so let's jump right into this, Chief, because this is a, should be a concern for parents and grandparents and all of us, shouldn't it? It should be. It really should be. Well, uh, why are we talking about this today? What What is the the... the the problem we seem to be finding all the time with kids that, and social media and, and what's out there. Well, you know, uh, Mike, I really think sometimes, you know, we as parents, and I'm a parent of two, a lot of two are adults now, but I think back when they were teenagers, we see our children in our home and we do everything within our power as parents to keep them safe. Um, and now, you know, looking at what's going on around us in society, now with this pandemic and many of our kids are home and it's very strict on what they can do outside of our home. So where are they? They're on social media. They're online. And I think, like you said earlier, this topic is timely because, you know, as parents we need to understand there are dangers online and on social media, whether it's a predator where there's a, a drug dealer trying to push things off on our children. Cyberbullying is still prevalent. We don't need to um, forget that that is still prevalent, uh, you know, online still. And then, you know, um, you know, we need to think about self-esteem. What are our children seeing that's getting posted on social media and now they're comparing themselves to? And they are trying to do everything within their power to become what they see that's being portrayed on these social media accounts they're on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. This is a, this is more serious than a lot of parents uh, realize, I believe, Chief. Uh, and and you and this is something that you know. Well, it, it won't happen to my child. You know, people have that. You hear that all the time. But you can tell us firsthand, uh, Reedsville PD, and some things that you've dealt with too. And, and we know it's right here, don't we? It's right here. Um, not too long ago, you know, we had, you know, we always, you know, certain cases really strike home and at the heart of officers. And they, you know, especially when it's involving something they can relate to. And mm-hmm. I recall there was a, this call from a parent of a missing child. Yeah. Don't know where my child is. And, you know, my detectives got and my officers got right on it. And you know, fortunately, we were able to get access to their social media accounts, and that's where we learned and discovered there was this communication between this child and a much, much, much older adult that the parents didn't know of. Mm-hmm. And fortunately, this case ended with, with great news. That child is now back in the loving care of, of the parents, but this child was found somewhere outside of our city. Well, this person came and picked this child up and took this child somewhere else. You know, so it's out there. And as parents, as custodians, as guardians, you know, as protectors of our most precious, most precious thing we can ever hold is our child and our children. You know, we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can to know what our children are exposed to on these different apps and social media um, platforms that they have access to on these smartphones and computers. Yeah. Well, uh, it, it's a whole different world than what we grew up in, that's for sure. We didn't have all of this. Um, uh, you've sent me some uh, some stats, Chief. Can you share some of those with our listeners, please? Yes, sir. You know, uh, these stats, and these was recent as of, you know, 2019, 2020, but 65% of parents surveyed um, Say they that they worry about their kids spending too much time in front of those computer screens, and those computer screens also include those smartphones. Mm. And many parents may not know this, but YouTube was the most used social media app among teens in 2020 and 2019. I'm sorry, followed by Instagram and Snapchat. And we all heard of those popular sites, Instagram and Snapchat. 
And now, this new social media platform that's been introduced, you know, about a year or so ago, TikTok, yeah. has become the fastest growing new app for American teens in 2019. And 60% of TikTok, you, TikTok users were between the ages of 16 to 24 years of age. Those are our teenagers, that 16, 17, 18 year old. And, you know, looking at some of the teens that are on TikTok and these other social media apps, there's age restrictions on many of those. Mm -hmm. But how many are on there that really are younger, but they're portraying themselves to be older? So this statistic could be, you know, could be, you know a little bit off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's some, and just the last couple of statistics from Common Sense Census. But in 2015, and this is startling a little bit to me on some of these, in 2015, 24% of kids aged 8 to 18 had their own smartphone. Hmm. In just four years, the 2019, that's up, that went up to 41%. So in 15, 24% of kids between 8 to 12 had a smartphone. But in 2019, it's up to 41%. Mm -hmm. In 2015, 67% of our teens age 13 to 18 had a smartphone, but then in 19, it went up to 84%. Wow. That is a huge amount of, you know, teenagers with smartphones. And then the age of the average of 8 to 12-year-old American kids spent 4 hours and 44 minutes looking at screens each day in 2019. And then the last was American teens ages 13 to 8. 13 to 18, use entertainment screen media for an average of seven hours and 22 minutes each day in 2019. Wow. That's a lot of screen time. It's seven That's a hours. lot of time I see it. Yeah, hours. Yeah. And it's not just happening, you know, at home. It's happening when they're in the car or going somewhere. That's happening possibly even at our school. It's happening because eight hours a day is a lot of time. And it could be not even in the daytime, but in through, in throughout the night. Oh, sure. Yeah, the middle of the night, perhaps, too. Yeah, I want to go back to the very first thing you said. 65% of parents said they worry about their kids spending too much time in front of screens. And then you gave us these numbers here, up to seven hours. Well, if the, if the parents are worried, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, shouldn't the parents do something about this? They certainly should. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. Well, I know you have some safety tips uh, as parents that you want to share with us, too, Chief. Yes, sir. You know, the first tip, and I think it's very, very important, is communicate with our kids about social media safety. You know, talk to them about how to avoid. You know, this is one of those things you learn. I remember learning when I was in, in grade school how not to talk to strangers. Mm -hmm. So communicate with our, our children who may have access to these devices or access to get online or not to avoid talking to strangers and how to prevent revealing too much information about themselves and just basically practice um, general Internet safety tips. You know, we tell adults, many times we'll release statistics and information about, you know, don't post on Facebook or out on social media that you're going on your annual family vacation this week. <laughs> right. We do that to, for what reason? So that way um, criminals or people who are looking to victimize someone don't see that status change that you're away for a week and now they're trying to, uh, you know, go to your home and break in. The same is true for our children. You know, don't post personal information about yourselves on social media, about where you live or what neighborhood you live on and in the street you live on little personal, private information, keep those type of things off of social media. That way it will keep you safer as a child. Um, and then encourage them, you know, to come up, you know, parents to come up with guidelines and questions and, and maybe go over some content and, and situations with their children so that they really don't know how to handle it if something does arise while they're on social media. Mm-hmm, Yeah. Well, all of this is is extremely important, that's for sure. Uh, and, and it's always a good idea, uh, whatever age your child is, because we're finding out all of this is starting at such a younger age now than maybe we thought, uh, it, to, to really uh, monitor our, our kids' social media accounts and just make sure we know what they're doing. That's right. Um, 
Mike, and you know, and we need to educate ourselves as parents. Mm -hmm. We need to educate ourselves about the social media and what apps they're on. How can we talk to our children about certain apps if we don't ourselves don't know about Snapchat or TikTok or Twitter or Facebook? So we as parents need to educate ourselves about those different apps. And then even whatever apps that you may see on our children's phones, what are these apps? What is the true intent behind them? And how are children been using them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and really, if, if you look at the, the fine print on some of these, there are minimum ages. And you, you alluded to this a little bit ago, Chief. Minimum ages of things like uh, uh, WhatsApp and Snapchat and, and Twitter and Instagram. And sometimes people just uh, outright lie about their age, don't they? They do. I mean, you know, there's a lot of peer pressure out here. Our children oh, yeah. are faced with that every day. And, you know, you imagine um, you are an 11-year-old young boy or 11-year-old um, girl, and many of the other kids around you have smartphones, and you have a smartphone, but they're on Snapchat or they're on the WhatsApp app or Twitter or Facebook. They're up there, so the pressure is, you know, why aren't you up there? Mm -hmm. Or, hey, you're missing out on something. So then what do 11-year-old young man or young boy or girl do? They get on the app, and they bump their age up a little bit, and now they're up there. Um, and parents may not know, but Instagram, the minimum age is 13. Mm -hmm. WhatsApp is 16. 16. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Snapchat is, and then the other, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook, all have a minimum age requirement of 13 years of age. So if your child is under those ages and they're on these apps, they're already violating those restrictions and rules that those social media platforms put in place. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. Well, uh, we as parents and, and grandparents and guardians of our children uh, certainly need to be aware of all of this. And, and really it comes down to the parents uh, and who's in charge of the kids and, and, and set some ground rules for our young people on social media. That's the best thing to do, isn't it? It is the best thing. I know we want to give our children um, some level of privacy, and, and I do support that. But at the same time, we have to make sure they understand those ground rules. And when those ground rules are broken, there's consequences to that. So, you know, we encourage parents to, you know, be safe to like, keep the computer or the laptop in a common room of the house so that way you can monitor what the child is doing. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's apps now that parents can install on their children's phone to kind of restrict how much time they're spending on certain apps or how much time they're spending on the Internet, on computers or laptops. They need to look at investing in this software and platforms they can install on their home computer or laptop or their, even the smartphone um, through some either service or maybe even a cellular service that will monitor what our children are doing to ensure they're safe. And then if there's those dangerous apps out there, Lord forbid, you know, this, these software platforms will give the parent the ability to restrict um, our children from even downloading or seeing that kind of content on their smartphone device or on their home computer or laptop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's something that we, we all must be aware of to protect our young people, that's for sure. Only got just a, a little bit of time here left, Chief. Maybe some closing thoughts, please. You know, um, I can't stress enough as, you know, a parent myself um, and, and have a grandchild of four, and, you know, one day she's going to be asking her father or mother and even her grandpa Hassel, you know, can I get a smartphone? Mm -hmm. And we need to just remember these smartphones, have dangers. Even if our children are in our homes where they're safe and secure, there's dangers that are lurking out on the internet. There's dangers on these apps that we as parents need to be aware of. And I can't stress for parents to please get involved, know what our children are doing on these apps and these platforms and online to help keep them safe from predators. Chief, thank you for this good information. We need to do another one of these again soon if we can. We definitely do, um, Mike. This is dear to my heart, and I know it's dear to your heart and many others. It is. Okay. Thank you. We'll talk again soon. Thank you. Robert Hassel, Reedsville Police Chief.
Please check out uh, the website, riseupreadsville.com, and visit our sponsor, That Little Pork Shop on Monroe Street in Uptown Eden. You'll find them on Facebook for their menu.